In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with the Brad Treeview UI extension site provided with the Telerik Cab enabling kit, which is available at telerikcab.codeplex.com. As you can see here, I've already put together a project that utilizes the Rad Treeview UI extension site, and today what I'm going to be doing is showing you how it works. Let's get started by taking a look at the infrastructure.layout project. I'm going to go ahead and open Shell Layout View in the designer. And as you can see here, what I've done is I've replaced the deck workspace that was originally generated by the SCSF with a standard Rad Tree View. And I've left everything else the same on this form. And if we take a look at the code behind for this and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that I've also exposed that Rad Tree View as a property so that we can access it from the presenter. So let's take a look at the presenter. Inside of the presenter, in the onViewSet method, you'll see that I've actually registered the main rad tree view as a UI extension site. And to do this, I called the registerSite method provided on the UI extension site's object of the work item. And the registerSite method takes a string name constant, which I had previously added to the UI extension site name's constant file. I've called it main rad tree view, and it also takes the actual object, which I've retrieved from the property I exposed on the view, view.mainRadTreeView. Now, what I did next is a little bit different than what you would normally do with a UI extension site. When using a UI extension site, you would typically extend it by creating child components set up to invoke command handlers based on that component's provided events. For example, if it's a toolbar button, you would set up the command handler to be invoked by that button's click event. In the case of the RadTreeView, this works a little bit differently. The nodes that we will be adding to the rad tree view have no click event. The event that is triggered when a node is clicked is instead the selected event on the actual rad tree view object. So in the case of the rad tree view, I've actually set up an event publication that passes the tag of the node that was clicked and its event arguments. So let's take a look at the code for that event publication. If I scroll up top here and expand the event publications region, you can see it. Uh, just a typical event publication that I use the SCSF context menu to generate. And as you can see here, I've changed the default event arguments to pass an object instead of nothing. And I've called this event publication the rad tree view node selected event. And if we scroll down and take a look at the onViewSet method again, you can see that I've actually subscribed to the main rad tree views selected event. And inside of the selected event, I create an event arguments object. And in that object, I've specified the tag as the object I want to be passed in the event arguments. And after creating that object, I simply call the onTreeView node selected method, uh, which you can see down here in the event invokers region. And what this method does is it simply invokes that event publication and whoever subscribed to it and whatever module will receive this event from the rad tree view with the tag of whatever node was clicked. So that's all it takes to set up the rad tree view as a UI extension site. Now let's take a look at how we can use it in one of our modules. Down here I have the settings module that I've previously created and inside of this module it contains six separate views and the way this application is actually going to work is if we take a look up here at the tools menu in Visual Studio and open up options, you can see that there's a tree view here on the left. And if I click on any of these options in the tree view, it immediately changes the view located to the right. And so that's basically how the views in my module are going to be displayed. So let's open up modulecontroller.cs. Inside of modulecontroller.cs, you can see that I've added a extend rad tree view method, which I'm calling from the run method. So let's take a look at the code inside of the extend rad tree view method. So in this first block of code, what I've done is I've created a single parent node and three child nodes. For the parent node, I've called it environment, and that's the node that I've used to extend the rad tree view UI extension site. And to do that, I've simply accessed the rad tree view UI extension site using its string name constant 
inside of the UI extension site's collection on the work item. And I've simply called the add method on that, specifying that I want to add a rad tree node as the type, and I simply pass in the environment node. And now the UI extension site is extended. For the next node, I've called it general. And I've specified a tag this time. And the reason, once again, that I want to specify a tag is that we're using an event publication to notify us when a node gets clicked. And this tag is actually what's going to get passed back as the identity of the node. So for this node, I've specified environment.general as the tag. And after doing that, I simply add it to the nodes collection on the environment node object, which I had created previously. And the help and the startup nodes work exactly the same way. So I'll just go over the, the help node so you can get a feel for this once again. So for the help node, I've called it help. And its tag, I've specified that as environment.help. And after doing that, I simply add it to the nodes collection on the environment node once again. And now, in this second block of code, I'm actually doing the same exact thing as that first block. I've created a parent node and three child nodes. So for the parent node, I've called it HTML Designer. And this is the node that I've used to extend the UI extension site once again. And to do that, I've accessed the UI extension site using its string name constant from the UI extension site's collection on the work item. And I've called add and I've specified rad tree node as the type and I simply pass in HTML designer node. And after doing that, I've created a general node and I've set the tag as HTML designer general and I simply add that node to the nodes collection on the HTML designer node. And then I do that for these other two nodes as well. And that's all there is to extending the UI extension site. Now let's take a look at the event subscription. Down here, I've actually subscribed to the event publication that I created in the Shell Layout View Presenter. And once again, that event publication gets triggered when you click on a node instead of the Rad Tree View UI extension site. And it gets past the tag of that node and its event arguments. So if we take a look at the code for this method, this first line, I'm actually retrieving the data from the event arguments and the data being the tag of the node that was clicked and I convert it to its string value and call it tag name. And based on the value of tag name, I can determine which view that I would like to show. So if the tag name is, for example, environment.general, then I show the environment general view. And if the tag name is HTML designer general, then I show the HTML designer general view. And that's really all there is to it. It doesn't get much simpler than that. So now that we've seen all of the code for the application, let's take a look at the application actually running. Once the application is up and running, we can see immediately that the UI extension site has been extended. If I expand these two nodes, we can see all three of each of their children nodes. So if I click the general node now, you can see that the event publication is getting triggered and where I've subscribed to it is actually getting called and passed the tag of that node and then based on that tag it determines that it needs to display the general view. And it works exactly the same when I click help startup and the same when I click general CSS and CSS styling. It just displays the view associated with the tag of that node. And that's all there is to this application. Well that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you're interested in learning more about the Telerik Cab Enabling Kit, I suggest paying a visit to its CodePlex website at telericcab.codeplex.com.